If you use a pen tablet, you know that your pen has a nib. These nibs are typically plastic, but sometimes felt, and they wear down. Sometimes they wear down, for some of you, at a fantastic rate, like days. And it can be very irritating to buy replacements. One option that sometimes comes up is to consider getting a metal nib. Metal nibs are interesting because in theory, a metal nib does not wear down at all. And so it's gonna last a long time. But the real question we need to address is, is using a metal nib safe for your pen tablet? In this video, I'm going to explore the interaction between the nib of the pen and the surface of a pen tablet, how nibs wear out, and the arguments both for and against using a metal nib. And also, I'm gonna start a six month experiment to see if we can measure the impact of a metal nib. In other words, how much does it damage the surface of a pen tablet? Just a quick reminder, this video is going to be about pen tablets, not pen displays. I intend to cover pen displays with a video that is focused on a more general topic of protecting the glass surface of pen displays. So let's discuss the basics of the interaction between the pen and the surface. The pen contacts the surface. That of course causes some pressure and the more you push, the more pressure. This pressure, of course, causes friction between the nib and the surface of the pen tablet. And as the nib and the surface continue to interact with each other as you draw, this friction will cause one or both of them to wear down a bit. Here's a picture of an unused Wacom art pen. You can see that the nib is smooth and round, but after using this pen with a Wacom Intuos Pro Large, you can see how different the nib shape is. A lot of the nib material has worn away and it has developed an angle to it and an edge. This wearing down of the nib for me happened in about two days. To be fair, I have had different experiences with different pens and their nibs. For example, I have not seen this kind of wearing down of the nib at all with nibs from my Wacom Pro Pen 2 models that I've used with the very same tablet for months. This could be because the nib material is different or it could be because I was drawing differently with the Pro Pen 2 models than the Art Pen. It's still very unclear to me what is driving the difference in these results between these two nibs. So that's something I might investigate in the future. I am certain that one of the contributing factors in nib wear is the drawing technique. And a great example of that is trying to fill in an area with lots of small strokes, as if you were using a pencil. This will create a lot of repetitive friction on the nib and, and wear it down very fast. Another factor that contributes to the formation of that edge that you saw on the tip is the fact that in order to keep the pen buttons accessible to your fingers, you tend to hold the pen in a very specific orientation in your hand. Because if you held it in any other orientation, the buttons would either be not accessible or you'd always be pressing the buttons. So we see how nibs can be affected, but we have to remember that surfaces are also affected. One way in which surfaces can change is with their texture. All pen tablet surfaces have some texture. Some are more smooth and some are much more rough. Some people like the more rough texture because it reminds them of drawing on paper. As you continue drawing on a pen tablet, you may notice that you're slowly wearing away some of the texture of the tablet. These changes are often visible on the surface, especially at certain lighting angles. You might be able to see that the area where you've worn away the texture is smoother and maybe even a bit shinier. In fact, as you draw, you might even be able to hear the difference as the nib makes contact with the smooth area versus the more textured areas. The Wacom Intuos Pro models are a bit more textured than the older models. Here's an example of one of my own tablets. I bought this new about six months ago. This is a Wacom Intuos Pro Large. And you can see towards the middle of the tablet, there's that smooth and shiny area where the texture has worn away. And you can see a slightly odd pattern has developed there as well. In my standard seating position, looking straight down on my tablet, with the lighting conditions I work under, this is impossible to see. But if I angle it against a light source just right, it'll show up a little bit better in this photo. But I have to say, this effect is really just cosmetic. As I draw with a pen, I don't feel it at all. 
As I move my finger around it, I can't feel it at all. There is one thing I do notice, it's very subtle and I have to be trying to notice it. When I'm drawing with the pen, I can hear a very slight difference in sound, depending on whether I'm in the more smooth region or the more textured region. And again, this is all cosmetic and this kind of wear is completely normal for a pen tablet. Another kind of change that happens in the surface of a pen tablet is that scratches can develop on the surface. This is the same tablet I was just talking about. And again, this is after six months. And again, it is very difficult to see this if you're looking straight down on the tablet. However, under the right lighting conditions and the right angle, you can see these tiny little scratches on the pen tablet. And I cannot detect these scratches with a pen. I cannot detect these scratches with a finger. There's no sound difference. This is a completely cosmetic change to the surface. And again, this is completely normal. Okay, so I showed you some normal wear and tear. Let's take a look at a more extreme example. Some of you know, I like to buy used Wacom pen tablets, especially some of the very old tablets. This is a Wacom Intuos 2 tablet, one of the larger models. This tablet has been out for 20 years and it's been used in all that time. And you can see some scratches. And these scratches are long. The one in the middle there is two inches long. Some of them have even more erosion around the edge of the scratches. These scratches are not cosmetic. I can definitely feel them with my finger and I can definitely feel them with a pen. In fact, these scratches are so severe that as I draw, they will actually deflect the tip of the pen. So in my drawing app, when I'm trying to draw a straight line, what I'll actually get is a straight line with little bumps. That's how severe these scratches are. I have to admit, when I first got this tablet, I was very shocked at the severity of these scratches. I found it very irritating and unpleasant to draw with this kind of damage to the surface. You're gonna see more of this specific tablet in a future video. I'm planning one on showing how I restored this surface. We've been talking about surface texture a lot. And again, all tablets have some kind of texture. Some are more smooth and some are more rough. Interestingly, a very small number of tablets have a surface that can be replaced. Wacom sells something called texture sheets for their Wacom Intuos Pro large and medium. These texture sheets come in three variants, standard, smooth, and rough. The standard texture is what you get out of the box with a new Wacom Intuos Pro tablet. There are two reasons why these texture sheets are interesting. First, you can restore the surface of a damaged tablet. Second, you may not like the texture that you have, so you can replace it with something either smoother or more rough. I bought a Wacom texture sheet for one of my tablets, and in a future video, I'll show you how to install it. We spent some time talking about the background of nibs and surfaces and how they wear out. Let's move on to the topic of metal nibs. And we'll start with the arguments, both for and against using a metal nib. Let's start with the case against using a metal nib with a pen tablet. In this point of view, the nib and the tablet are in an adversarial game. The name of that game is friction. The friction between them will cause something to wear out before the other. If the nib does not wear out, then the surface will wear out. This means the surface will get damaged and it can be difficult and expensive to repair a surface. And remember, very few tablets have replaceable surfaces. If the nib does wear down, then what that means is the surface of the tablet is not wearing down. And of course, it's very cheap and easy to replace the nibs. So in summary, this position is sacrifice the life of your nibs to spare the life of your pen tablet. So on the whole, I think this is a very reasonable argument and many agree with this position. Now let's take a look at the argument for using a metal nib with a pen tablet. And this argument is very interesting. As a plastic nib wears out, it loses its round quality and instead develops a sharp edge. This sharp edge will damage the tablet. Metal nibs, however, unlike plastic, will stay round and smooth. This means they are far less likely to damage the surface of the tablet. So this view says you get the best of both worlds. Your nibs last forever and your tablet stays safe. And I have to admit, this position also seems somewhat reasonable. So how can we decide this? Well, I am not a pen scientist, but I'm gonna start a six month experiment today. This experiment is going to test how much a metal nib will damage the surface of a pen tablet. 
First, I need a surface free of damage. I have two options. I can buy a new pen tablet or I can buy a texture sheet. In my case, I decided to just buy a new standard texture sheet for my Wacom Intuos Pro Large. Second, I purchased a metal nib for my Wacom Pro Pen 2. The link to the nib I purchased is in the description of this video. This nib is a product sold in Japan and I used whiterabbitexpress.com to buy this nib. Let me be upfront. All things considered, this was not cheap. It cost me $32 to buy the nib and there was additional shipping costs. You may be able to find metal nibs in other places that are far cheaper sources. Embarrassingly, I wasn't paying super close attention to the order and at $32, I thought I was getting a pack of nibs. Instead, I got exactly one nib. Here it is next to the original Pro Pen 2 nib. It's the same shape. I put it in and it all just worked. The pen reacted like normal. Maybe the drawing sensation was just incredibly subtly different, but I don't notice it after a day. Now I have a lot of pens, so I tend to mark them with gaffer tape. Because I have also a lot of Pro Pen 2s, to make it easier for me to find the one that has the metal nib, I added some camouflage gaffer tape. So here's the timeline for the next six months. When I need to use my tablet, I'm going to use this tablet with its new texture sheet, and I'm only going to use the pen with the metal nib. I will report back on this YouTube channel in one month, three months, and six months. And on each month, we'll see how well the experiment is progressing and what's happening to the surface of the tablet. At six months, the experiment will end and we'll see what we've learned. I am really very excited to do this experiment. I'm going to have a lot of fun. So I will see you in one month for a follow-up. Thank you for your time. And I hope you found this video interesting.